role within uh, Rounders uh, has been umpiring. So we'll know in depth about the rules and how to uh, um, actually apply them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'd love to welcome uh, Roderick Gass. Welcome, Rod. Thank you, Julia. From the lovely Cheltenham. Indeed so. It's not yeah. lovely at the moment. It's overcast and it's not actually raining, but it, it is definitely overcast. Oh, I know, I know. As warm as it has been. It's not right. nice in Yorkshire, I must say. So, first of all, tell us about your first memories with Rounders and how you got involved. Right. Well, I worked for a company you may have heard of called Eagle Star. They're an insurance company and they were very um, uh, paternal, I think was a good way to describe them. And they had a very thriving sports and social club. And they encouraged interdepartmental competitions, one of which was rounders. And, and what that, year would this be, Rod? Well, we're talking about uh, whew, um, sort of 80, uh, early 80s, 82, something like that. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. And um, at the time I, I was in IT and I was supporting uh, the investment department there. And they asked me to join them to play because they were mainly women and had very few men. Um, I played very little, in fact, and discovered that if I hit the ball, and I say if, it went in the air past second post and was caught. <laughs> so I wasn't very much use as a player, but as, as they had great trouble, and uh, as, you, as you might know, getting officials to do anything. Getting anybody to be an official was a great problem. So I said, mm. well, right, I'll, I'll try umpiring. And at that time, of course, um, I knew nothing about the game other than the fact that you sort of stood there and hit the ball with a the bat and ran round. Mm. But um, rule books were available. And so uh, I took up umpiring with that group of friends. Uh, right. Uh, the, the team actually was... Also in the local league, we had a local league that had started a few years earlier. And at the time, it was in a fish. Uh, sorry, it was affiliated to the NRA, which was the name of Rounders at the time, National Rounders yeah. Association, not the National Rifle Association or <laughs> whatever else you might think NRA stands for. And I we joined them and I, I got to do a bit more umpiring. And in 1984, I was the match official for the start of season tournament. Well, and that was locally too. So have that you was, always that umpired just, that was in all locally. Yeah. We're only talking about local at the moment. Nothing yeah. to do with rounders, the, the National Association of Rounders, or, or as they became rounders, thing. they were just something in the background that we knew existed and we got rule books from them and we paid a small fee to affiliate mm. as a league. Yeah. Um, boom, boom, boom. And that was the same year that... Um, you were no longer allowed to get a player out by touching them with the ball. So oh, I remember that at school. Yeah, you used to chase yeah. after them, holding the ball in your hand. And yeah, yeah. That, that was the year they they banned the, the they banned that. That was no longer. I allowed. used to love that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Except, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. More is it supposed to be a non-contact sport? Yeah, it is. I suppose. I suppose me, me being a northerner and uh, into rugby league, uh, yeah. that oh, sort yes, of physical yeah. contact would have appealed. Indeed, so, <laughs> indeed, so I can understand. So that, that was in 1984. They took that out of the yeah. rules. Wow, yeah, that's right. And uh, I, I stayed on umpiring for the local league until it packed up. And uh, I was um, a committee member for some time. In 2002, I became the chairman. That was that. Uh, right. Uh, so with this local league, was it mixed then? Or... Yes, yes, it was only mixed. Yeah. It was only mixed. Um, the England setup has been primarily female mm -hmm. because that's how they get their money, supporting women in sport. Ah, right, okay. Mainly, yeah. should I say that's mainly yeah, how yeah, they yeah. do. They back in the days, back it back when uh, those were going on, there were uh, men's teams and mixed teams. So oh, right, in the nineteen eighties. Yes, that was supported by uh, the National Rounders Association. Oh, um, we went to send. We sent a team up to Nottingham from our league to, 
to part, take part in one of their competitions. Uh, I think it was organised by St John's Ambulance, but I'm not absolutely certain about that. It might have been organised by the National Rounders Association. Yeah. And despite not being qualified, I actually got to umpire there, whereas normally they only use qualified umpires. Right. But um, again, they were short and I was prepared to do it. And so, actually, you had quite a lot of experience already, didn't you, from well, doing your local league? Experience. Yeah. But um, when you when you go to national competitions, it's a whole different ball game. Oh right! In what way? In what in in the rules are strictly applied. There is no tolerance for, uh, you know, was it this? Was it that? You know, that's it. Get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it up. You're out. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that, that was a real eye-opener. And again, the standard of play was so much different because we were sort of a very friendly league and nobody bowled extremely quickly. Whereas we went to these competition, this, this competition, in fact. We, we went there twice, I think. And um, people were bowling at incredible speeds from yeah. our point of view. Yeah, yeah. And that was the time when there wasn't a line behind the batting square. Just the, the backstop couldn't encroach before mm. until the ball had been played. And at some of the games, the backstop used to stand virtually at the back of the bats of the batting square. And the ball would come through here in this area and the backstop would be there, catch it and throw it to the first post before the person had taken a step <clears throat> out of the square. That was that. Wow, quick. goodness that, me. That was the sort of standard we saw. But you couldn't do that now because the backstop can't stand that close. And I imagine that's really dangerous anyway. Well, it is. It is. But, but I mean, the rules still allow you to pitch the ball in this area because yeah. it's not a body ball. It's not aimed at you. Yes. Yeah, but you yeah. obviously think when it's coming there, it's going to hit you. So you, yeah, yeah. your natural, you actually, reaction, natural reaction, reaction is to move is, and duck. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, th there were teams that could do that. There was one particular one, I think, was called Kelly's, who were one of the top teams at the time. Mm. And I bet it was interesting umpiring the difference between that, initially that local league, and then moving into that national league. Well, indeed. I mean, it, it, as I said, it was, it was a real shock. And, uh, of course, they weren't, they didn't take me seriously to start with. <laughs> Who's this bumpkin that's come up here? <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, that changed. Um, where are we? Uh, -dum -bum -bum -bum. Right. Um, our league also had trouble with umpire getting people to umpire, and they they wrote to the NRA and tried to get them to send somebody down to give us a talk about about how umpiring should be done and etc. Now, Gordon Le Leesley, who you may or may not have come across. No, I haven't yet. No. Right. Or he 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 was, I believe, sent down. Of course, we, we, we paid his travelling expenses one evening. And unfortunately, that was the that I was on holiday at the time he oh. came down that year. And so I didn't benefit from that, but the, the rest of the people did, and our level of umpiring went up a bit after that. So how many teams did you have in the league then at that point? Well, I think we had 30. It was, right. Oh, brilliant. There, it was virtually every enterprise you could think of around the Cheltenham area mm. put a team in. Mm. Uh, well, I've got I've got one here from eighty two, and there were twenty four teams in that that year. Yeah. Wow. So, um, they were a lot of. Were they well, works mixture of works teams well, and were, local they were all, teams? They were mainly they were all works teams, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, Probably banks, the own societies, the gas board, um, and things like that. Oh, uh, and then we had um, Cheltenham North Rugby Club. They they used that to keep their players fit in the summer. Yes, it wasn't any summer training in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? I, I mean, and it's come true in quite a lot of areas around how big works teams were at that time uh, and how supportive, um, you know, different companies were to keep their um, employees active, really. And oh, yeah. Rounders was a really good yeah. good way of doing it, wasn't it? 
It was indeed. It was indeed. But I mean, that's all. That's all gone now. People don't have sports no. and social clubs to speak of. No, not like they used to have at not all. Anything like that? Yeah. So mm. you were then. Who looked after the umpires in your area then at the time? Was that your responsibility? Well, it, it was the committee, basically, of the uh, of the local rounders league. So mm. there'd be, um, I don't know, um, six or seven of. Yeah, because I know that then we had the chairman, the secretary, the fixers secretary, the sports and social secretary, and somebody. There, there, there were loads of people on. There were about six or seven people on the committee, and then there were normal committee members of another another six or so. So there was quite a large group of people, mm. and if there was any dispute about anything that had gone on, it went to the committee to resolve. Yeah, yeah. who was going to make decisions. Mm based on what they knew and what was going on. So you started, uh, so obviously there was a training session that you couldn't attend, unfortunately. What happened then with the development of umpires? We, they tried, our our local league again tried to get uh, people to be qualified, but there was little interest. And then a year later, uh, chap, John from Somerset, I can't remember for the life of me his surname, he came up and ran a course for six of us at um, Eagle Stars Sports and Social Club. So there was a a written test and a bit of practical. Mm -hmm. And he actually passed all of us, all the six that went. So that that was the qualification we got. Mm. And... That was fine. Um, I then subsequently went up to a Leicester tournament at the national finals and I umpired there to get my next level qualification. Right. OK, so you had to it was your once you'd done the exam and everything. It was... Once you'd done the exam and the practical, that gave you the first level of umpiring. That was yep. well, I can't remember what it was called in those days. Yeah. Then you got your national qualification to do that. You had to be viewed umpiring a game right. at higher quality, which is yeah. the Nationals. And yeah. you also had to put in a log of, I think it was a dozen games you'd umpired. Yeah, brilliant. Nothing so, better than learning how to umpire by than by umpiring, is there? No, indeed not. And so that happened, I think it was back in 94, by the, we've moved on to now. And after that, I started to be asked to go and umpire at NRA events. Um, as I say, I think it was 94. The oldest document I've got is a renew of my um, umpiring qualifications, in which is dated 98. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So, so you, have you kept everything on your umpiring then, all the different games you, all the different uh, games you no, did? And... No, I, <laughs> I'm afraid not. There were too many and too frequent. Yeah. So how many games would you have been doing a week at that time then? Well, let me put it this way. Um, because of the lack of people wanting to umpire in our local league, I would umpire four nights a week. Wow. And again, whoever I, I would there were certain teams that I did in, that asked me specifically at the start of the season. I said, right, I'll do your games as long as I'm not off somewhere else. Mm. Like holidays and such like. Mm. And other teams asked me. If I was available, I would do them as well. Mm. So I, as I said, throughout the season, I tended to do something like four nights a week because we, in our local league, the team decided the night they wanted to play on and there weren't many teams that, sorry, most teams played on different nights. There were a few teams that played on a Friday night. Mm. But other than that, they, they seemed they were scattered throughout. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, and that was that was that was that was, pro- that was Gordon, I believe. Again, did my test, mm. and that was at Leicester, I understand. Yeah. Now there was a sports competition between three cities locally, which was Gloucester, Worcester, and Hereford, where lots of sports were involved. Rounders of which was one. And two years, Gloucester couldn't get a team and dropped out and Cheltenham took their place. Uh, we went over to Hereford. I think it was 92, but I'm not absolutely certain about the date of that one. 
and it was a girls only and they did two things which as in our local league girls rarely bowled because they're not fun the boys tended to bowl faster mm. so we were at a distinct disadvantage there as none of the girls could and they also played with a boundary which we'd never played with and of course lo and behold catches made out step over the boundary not out <laughs> So they made several mistakes like that. And I can't actually remember if I umpired or not there because no, I, I can't remember. And uh, we, we, were, we were runners up to Hereford who uh, beat both us and, and Worcester. And in 94, Cheltenham held the, that event and we organised it. It was a bit of a disaster because they couldn't, for some reason they couldn't find out the local school despite having a... Uh, an address and a, a postcode and a, and a map sent to them. So we we started late, finished late, and had some very grumpy people because they they wanted to get off to the main celebrations. Yeah. Oh, so was it linked to another event? Was it? Well, it, well, it was. It was all. It was lots of, lots of sports competitions, and most right. of them being held at um, at uh, a sports centre, uh, sort of on the edge of Chel the other side of Cheltenham, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas. We had this particular school ground we got for nothing, basically, because uh, being a, a smallish local league, we, we didn't charge people much. So we didn't have a huge budget, mm. couldn't do very much. Yeah. So the the, um, the Hereford and Worcester teams wanted to get back to the main <laughs> celebration, which they were very late in getting to. Yeah, yeah, it sounds but, like it. Oh, there we go. Right, uh, Cheltenham held uh, events for the National Rounders Association twice. Once at uh, Eagle Star Sport Ground, where they did a, a video, a training video they made. Now I appear on that, but you wouldn't think it. You wouldn't think it was me. I, I thought I did quite well, but as I said, ninety nine percent of my performance ended up on the cutting floor. <laughs> <laughs> and what were you were you speaking about umpiring? No, no, I was actually it was a match. They were we were, we were it was it, it was a it was a game set up to do training for but for for the players. Oh right, I okay. was I was one of I was one of the two umpires, mm. and so uh, the idea was to show things you could do and not do and I said most of my performance ended up on the cutting floor because it was mainly for the, the players yeah 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 but there That's we go hiring. and uh they came down and in 2009 that was 2001 that was in 2009 they came down again and this was supposed to be an international but Wales weren't ready we for when this had been organized early in the year and so it ended up being an inter an inter um team competition between the various national teams and uh, a team from Worcester. Oh right. So Wales weren't ready as in internationally, they didn't have well, the team. They, they hadn't organized themselves. It was too uh, early in the season for them. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. I yeah. Know. Yeah, I think I think it was. I think we tried to play in a group, so I think it was quite early. Mm. Yeah. So they didn't arrive. Right now, have you heard of Jet? I Super haven't. Jet. No, tell me about Ooh, Jet. Said something about Jet. Right, it's a, it was a, a joint educational trust. All right. Okay. It well. was a, it was a competition played amongst um, private schools. Uh, the boys played cricket, girls played rounders, and it started early in the year. And towards the end of June, they had a finals at St Edward's School in Oxford. And uh, Sue and I, amongst other people, went there and umpired those games. So they had two semi finals and a final. And who organised that then? Well, it's this, it's this organisation called JET. Right. So they organised it and then they, they organised asked... it. Yeah. And they ran it, and eventually they combined with another charity, and then COVID finished everything off. 
Oh, right. So what was it like umpiring that then? Well, that, 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 was, that was great because these are 13-year-old girls and they're very enthusiastic and they're very polite. They don't challenge the umpire unlike other places. Did you have many um, challenges as an umpire then? Yeah. Local league, people didn't understand that, that my decision was fine. <laughs> and they would argue <laughs> blatantly. Um, they were very disrespectful, despite the fact that they were told repeatedly that that was not the way to treat people. Oh, really? So did you uh, have to have disciplinaries and things from your umpiring then, or did you uh, just deal with it at the time? We certainly did have disciplinaries, but um, they were mainly about uh, fights that had taken part when you were taking place. Um, how should I put this? The, the particular event that caused most of the problems, I fortunately wasn't umpiring, but um, a player who didn't understand the rules stood on the running track, and when the player ran into him, he took a, he, he attempted to flatten him. Oh wow! So a fight ensued. Indeed, so. <laughs> and uh, there was a there had to be a disciplinary meeting about that, and he got banned for several games, and. Uh, the team he played for was, was given a warning about their not their, their um, um how should I put behavior this? not 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 restraining him oh right <laughs> <laughs> I so, don't know how you restrain someone who's already fighting well you you could go and attempt to interrupt it yeah I suppose you but, can, um, suppose you can. A, a rather large rugby player you don't want to take on do you no not really not really. Even though the rest of the team were all rugby players. Yeah. So did you find it a real... What was the cha most challenging thing about being an umpire then? Um, most challenging thing? Um, I don't know. I don't think anything really was that challenging. I mean, telling people that... And sending... Well, I never actually think I sent it. No, I didn't. I don't think I've ever sent anybody off. But um, challenging... No, I don't. It wasn't really, from my point of view, I didn't really find anything particularly challenging. Um, and perhaps I'd have to sort of withdraw myself and read the rule book at times just to make sure I yeah. got got the decision right. But uh, I don't think anything was particularly challenging. I suppose one of my most challenging decisions was one I was most proud of, which was against Wales in. Uh, we were up in Rill, I think, and the England batter had... Do you know much about the game around us? Yes, the... I do, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. The, the England batter had run past second post and had crossed the line. Yep. Right. I'm batter's... I'm, I'm bowler's umpire. But it's my decision as to what happens next. And the, bow, the, the, the batter started making their way back towards the post then realised they'd gone over the line and so bolted for third the, in, from a very strange position. I mean, you wouldn't normally... You, you, she, she's out in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. and then suddenly... But there's a group of Welsh players in her way. Oh, right. Right. And one of them has the ball and now makes for the third post because she realises that the, the battery is now running to third post. But it's obviously she's in the way. Yeah, yeah. Obstruction. So, when I give obstruction, then all hell breaks loose <laughs> because all the Welsh players say, she's not on the running track. She's not on the running track. It's not, it's not right. She, she's not, you, you can't give her obstruction. She's out. And so I've got all the Welsh team and the Welsh umpire shouting at me, <laughs> telling me what my decision should be. So I'm sort of standing there calmly. This is one of the very few times I've actually stood there calmly waiting for them to desist. And I kind calmly explained to them that the running track is where the butter naturally runs. And as she's over there, the shortest route to third post is that straight line through you lot. <laughs> so you have obstructed her. Now, unfortunately, that was the only score the England team made all day. Oh, wow. The obstruction and the half rounder scored at third. They lost that match badly. Right. But um, that was probably the most intimidating 
Yeah, that I'm sounds fine. awful, like all the team on your backs. But you sounds like you managed it really well. Well, I mean, that's what I'm there for. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And how was your colleague then? Because there's always two of you, isn't there? Well, she's the other. She's the Welsh Empire, so she's she's also against me at the time. Oh no! It, it, although, if you if you look at the round the rule book, the umpire should be neutral and should form the third team on the pitch. Mm. But when you're playing the Welsh, that does not happen. Yeah. No, I can imagine. I can imagine. But um, we've we've stopped playing the Welsh now because all the players only come from one league and so we apparently decided that this wasn't a representative Welsh team so we wouldn't classify it as a as an international and play it right okay that's and interesting all... so what's you've that was one of your proudest moments the yes. being able to be in control with a really hard decision have Correct. you got any more linked to games that you've umpired not, there aren't really any stand out because I mean, like I apply the rules as I from the rule book, and I interpret them as I see as things go on. And it's rare that I mean, quite often people say, "Huh, get your glasses changed and shoot have gone spec savers and things like that." Mm. But there aren't any really other things that stand out in my umpiring career. Really, I mean, it's all sort of gradually getting a to be better at umpiring and no there's nothing really that stands out I mean yeah. I, is there any memorable games that you've done and you feel really proud that you got to that level well again not really because I'm, I'm recognized as one of the to umpires so I get asked to do what would have been the internationals when we played them so no, not really. No, I mean, yeah. um, what else can I say? Oh yeah, I mean, take Wales. We used to play the South Wales lot as well. So we we'd have two sort of internationals against Wales. One for the North Wales lot, which were based around um, uh, Colwyn, not Colwyn Bay, further over at St Asaph, and the South Wales mob, which was a more representative but younger. They they, they were schools. And we played, for many years, we played at a, a school down in South Wales. And there were, we played, that was in the days when we had 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s and 17s. So we had a group of girls for every age group. And we played down there for quite a few years. And then one year we turned up and we couldn't play because gypsies had encamped on the playing field oh wow and the following year it was a bit more restricted we played at a different school because they didn't have such big grounds so we only played a few and then we played um at Landaff, is it called the cardiff cardiff just just under cardiff cathedral land i think it's called Landaff. Oh, I don't know. Unfortunately. No, there's, there's a school yeah. there we play. That that yeah. was a very nice ground there. Uh, they had the, the grounds had very good facilities there, and we played there for a few years. And then that Peter, I don't know why, but that that petered out. Yeah. Right. What else do I want to say? Right. Okay. Sue and I did the Oxford games. Did she mention that to you? No, she didn't. Oh, right. You've... Tell us all about it. Oh, you you know um <clears throat> they have these organised school, inter-school games. And they had one at Oxford, where I don't know why we were, I don't know how we got asked, but Sue and I turned up to, to assist in the umpiring over there. And we couldn't believe it. The number of young ladies involved in the Oxford area in playing rounders absolutely took our breath away. It was hundreds. And we, we had... Um, we 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 were there, out in the middle of nowhere, and sort of, you know, in the outskirts of Oxford, playing playing rounders amongst other games that were going on. It was wonderful. Oh, how wonderful nice! Day there, but, uh, we haven't been asked back. I don't know. Whether, I don't know whether we didn't impress or what. I don't know. Yeah, or maybe they haven't done it since. 
I don't know. I don't know. Right. Let's see here. Uh, right. Now, the next grade of umpire after national was a tester. I was made a tester after um, some time. Now, uh, oh, I've got that, haven't I? Uh, so what does testing involve? Well, it, it means, right, uh, 04. The earliest one I've got is, 19, is 2004. Mm. Now, testing involves gay, running the courses for umpires and assessing them. Right. And obviously that the uh, Rounders England has a, a set course that they've produced which you follow through. So there's a there's a there's a um a classroom session and then there's an outdoor session where they where they obviously show their skills off of umpiring and then there's a formal test, uh, a written test and a an umpiring test where you go and review them. Uh, you get to become a tester by being recommended by your fellow umpires having seen you perform. So I, I became a tester. All right, and that they're people from local leagues, are they, that, that come no, together? No. Uh, no, 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 no. This, this, is, this is only, this is the National Round Association. Right, okay. All right, brilliant. This is not yep. a local league. Uh, the fact that I have a rounders umpiring qualification doesn't really bother the local league because oh uh, sorry didn't bother our local league because they had so few people that wanted to or would, were willing to get qualified they couldn't enforce a rule that meant you had to have qualified umpires yeah, yeah i understand a shame but i mean that's the way it went yeah yeah so you you and are you still doing that now then i still am uh have you i i in fact assessed sue You've seen, mm -hmm. you've seen her, Sue Mason, you? yeah, just before yeah. you. Oh, Sue yes. Mason, yeah. I, I, I assessed her, um, for her national qualification. And are you Mel Mumford? Are you seeing her at all? No, that name hasn't come up yet. Right. Okay. Well, she's a she's another umpire that I recently assessed and qualified as a another national umpire. I um did the, I marked the written test for they had. Did I write it down? No, I didn't write it down. Right. Um, the, 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 the Tonians, the Tonians, yes, I think that's how they pronounce it. There are a group outside Hereford who, they're mainly a rugby club, but they also have a lot of rounders they play. And they had something like 12 umpires on a course. Now, and I got to mark the written papers they'd done for that. And Mel was one of those originally. And that was, I didn't do anything else there. But with Gordon again, I did do a an assessment of another group of girls who were doing their umpire qualifications and with, with, with Gordon again and I think most of those passed some with um, uh, needs attention <laughs> but most of those passed yeah and what else right now um, Round is in also used to play Scotland in internationals and i've been to perth twice ah fantastic uh flew up once flew up to edinburgh and then a, a higher car up to there and the other time i drove oh that's a long journey it is a long journey yeah it is a long journey yeah so how was that so when when would that have been in the that would have been oh i haven't got any dates on it why didn't i put any dates on it? Uh, that would have oh, been don't worry no. Don't that worry, Rod. Have... So what was it like? So it, it sounds like there well, was that was a that was a two-day event up there. 
They played the younger the younger teams on the first day and the older teams on the second day. And yeah. we're only talking about school children at this point. So yeah. we're only going up to an age 17-ish. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that was that was good fun, that was, because the Scots did actually take it seriously. And so they gave the English teams quite a hard time. Uh, and the standard, standard was quite good. It didn't have to have long discussions with any, anybody about rules or anything there. And uh, and the second day was the older teams and the girls at the highest, the oldest girls that we took up ended playing against a mixed team, but still managed to beat them. Just mm. Obviously the boys in the team normally only played cricket, so they didn't understand rounders initially. Mm -hmm. And at that level as well, it's it's not as easy. It's not just go out and whack the ball and run round, is it? It's quite technical. It is indeed and tactical. It is indeed. But being a cricketer, you've got the basic, you've got the hand-eye yeah, coordination course. skills. So yeah, although you're holding a, a bat in a so in a different way, and you're only holding it with one hand, mm -hmm. they were able to hit the ball quite well. Yeah. But then was surprised when. The girls facing them actually caught it when it was in the air, and or if it, if it dropped short and they it came to them, they were then able to throw it back in what the boys thought was a distance the girls shouldn't be able to throw. Being obviously at the time being very sexist. Yeah, time. yeah, but uh, the girls showed them by the sound of it. He did indeed. They didn't yeah. lose those matches. Yeah. No, oh, that's brilliant. So, what's that have been the highlight? of your uh, umpiring well, I think, actually, career? I think, I think probably going up there was, was one of my highlights and umpiring for Scotland when they came down to uh, Yorkshire, they played, they played, um, was, it in, was it Yorkshire? I think it was Leeds they came to. And uh, England played, played against them there. I think that, and I, I was a spare umpire who, got attached to the, um, or umpired on behalf of the Scottish teams there. Yeah. So those those were highlights and enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, Have you got, so when you sort of look back at your career, which continues still. It does. Um, yeah. The changes that have happened. Uh, what? Well, how should I put it? Um, initially, the organisation at Rounders England was excellent because they had somebody who was a school teacher called Nikki Coombs who she left unfortunately because her husband had to move he moved away somewhere they, they were in the Bristol area and they moved away and I'm afraid actually without being rude the, the NRA at that time didn't seem to be able to organize a piss up in a brewery <laughs> you'd turn up and wonder well, what else going on <laughs> It it, it, it it just wasn't well organised after that, mm. and they've steadily got better over the years. Obviously, because they've 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 learnt from their mistakes, shall we say? Absolutely, yeah. Um, Michelle Golland, who you probably have heard of, no, no, nope. no, she's no longer with them. Um, yeah, there was a. Not quite sure. There was a disagreement between the two parties. Ah, right. Okay. She, Always she, happens. Can happen, should I say? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, she eventually got to the organisation working quite well. And she was. Right. Are all these people involved with umpiring then, and no, organising no, umpiring? No, no, no they, they were events organisers. Right. Was okay. Like, around his yeah. So they weren't strictly speaking to do with the umpiring. Yeah. Um, Umpiring, sort of, there were meetings of umpire testers that were supposed to be held every year, but I think the best we managed was one every five years. And I guess that those sort of things, you look at the uh, actual interpretation of the laws, don't indeed, you? Indeed, indeed. And if there's any changes need to be made, and there are, there were umpire, there were meetings that. I'm not quite sure under what guise they were held, where the rules were they were possibly changed. Pe people used to it was advertised there was a rule change because the rule, rule book rule book goes on for three years. At the end of that three years, 
there's a meeting held and prior to the meeting people are asked to put in uh what they would changes they'd like Inv invited people then come along and discuss those changes and decide whether they're going to accept them or not into the rule book and they will be voted on so i mean that that's how the rules were right, okay yeah, yeah some yeah, changes some happen without that process unfortunately and some of them i wholeheartedly disagree with but they've happened and that's what we have to enforce. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting, isn't it, about interpretation and your view. And it's very mm. personal sometimes, isn't Indeed. it, within the sport? Uh, yeah, particularly as an official, when you become a student of the rules, don't you? You become an expert within that and actually have to apply it. So it's the application, isn't it, making it easier to apply? Indeed. Yeah. Have we, have we missed anything, Rod, in your well, very long umpiring career? Well, the only other thing is, um, outside of um, those, there are some civil service umpiring that we do. Um, HMRC have a competition. Oh, fabulous. That uh, used to move round... Is that, is that one of those? Uh, you... Yeah, it used to travel around the country. We've been up to Liverpool, we've been up to... Um, uh, Lancaster University and um, they then got a home in the police police sports association in Edgbaston but unfortunately that place has been sold now so I'm not sure where they're going this year right. I've, I've been sent the email I haven't I haven't looked but Sue and I and several other umpires have been doing that for quite a few years yeah and that that's good fun because they're a, they're a really friendly lot. They they turn up. They don't know the rules, and they 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 have their own subset of our rules that they because that they like things like um one male bowler, one female bowler, and things like that. Mm. And uh, that's 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 not conducted under the auspices of the Rounders Association. Yeah. But it sounds very much it's come from the old work stays, hasn't it? Yes, Where they indeed. still do things. And then we've got some an organized another civil service organization called HASRA, H A S R A, who have a sports day at Coventry University, sorry, Warwick University at Coventry. And one of the events there is Rounders, and Rounders England provide the umpires for that. Yeah. Which I get involved in. Oh, brilliant. Um it that, keeps you very busy, doesn't it? It this, does. Uh, it does. I mean, that, that, that's a weekend event. And uh, Kevin, are you are you talking to Kevin and Kevin yeah. at all? Right. He'll tell you about some of the nights he's not had a sleep because he's stayed overnight in in the student accommodation, and the the players have been up all night drinking and and partying and partying. So when they come out on the field, they're a bit hungover. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you some uh, stories about that. I've because it's never been, I've never fancied staying that close to them. So I've if I've if it's been somewhere like Lancaster, where the, the organisation, I've stayed in a in a different hotel and not stayed on site. Yeah, it sounds like a wise move to be honest. <laughs> but uh, uh, normally it's somewhere I can travel to during the during that day. Because yeah. the, the round is only takes, although the competition takes place over several days, I only, I'm only there for a day. Yeah. For the rounders. Yeah, sounds like a wise move. So when you look at sort of your involvement, and and it's a real community, isn't it, rounders? It is. It is. Um, and you sort of look back, uh, and and a long, illustrious career as an umpire from being a player that didn't quite be able to whack the ball to uh, <laughs> actually taking up umpiring. <laughs> You've really given a lot to the sport and I imagine you know part and parcel of that a lot of volunteer hours because Indeed. Um, Indeed. Uh, that's what you need to do and, it, and it's been lovely talking to you yeah. Rod and, and hearing more about it because it's a world that often people don't think about isn't it the umpiring it? world um, and the amount of commitment and time I mean four games a week uh, and giving up your weekends and and various other things is it, just mm -hmm. a huge commitment and uh, one that obviously you've enjoyed. I have indeed, yes. I mean, I, I, I have. 
don't know whether you can can you see that picture i there? can i that, love it yeah that's a caricature of me um work when I, at work we went on a course to a company called bgs who had a product called best one and the the salesman for that fancied himself as a bit of an artist. And he did, and he understood that I took up umpiring, and so I he did a caricature of me. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, Rod, thank you. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you for giving us your time and well, for I, sharing I your been memories. Useful. It's been absolutely lovely, really, really lovely. Um, and thank you for just sharing your memories and actually that timeline of when things happen. It, it's it's just so, so important. Good. Thank you very much. Well, there you go.